I'm Hoople's Cat. This is Surviving Rabies in a Disaster. Start of a new series. Hope you enjoy it. I managed to avoid it, but most North Americans seem to know about rabies from a film called Old Yeller, which was made by Disney back in the day when Disney didn't care about terrifying and upsetting children. In fact, in the 1950s and 1960s, I think it was compulsory to do that in North America. Sure, sure, it makes people froth at the mouth, we all know that. But does it still kill people? Yes. Now you might know that the word rabies comes from the Latin word for madness, but did you know that rabies presents in two extremely different ways? Only 80% of people with rabies have what we call furious rabies. This video is going to look at rabies and look at why we get it, how we get it, how we can avoid getting it, with a focus on how to avoid getting it and how to even treat it, possibly in grid down. In North America, people get rabies from bats, coyotes, foxes, skunks, and raccoons. North Americans mainly catch rabies from bats. The most dangerous threat of rabies in the U.S. is flying overhead. It used to be thought, well, it's a rabid dog, but the more common way of getting rabies is from the silver-haired bat. The deadly virus is transmitted from the saliva of infected animals to humans, usually through a bite. The bat doesn't always bite. Sometimes the saliva will drool onto you, or sometimes the bat will lick on the skin and again transmit the virus that way. Dr. Poland says that's why if you wake up and find a bat in the room, you should get the rabies vaccine. People think, well, the bat's in the house, we woke up with it, doesn't look like it bit anybody, doesn't matter. Rabies is such a severe disease with no cure, no treatment for it, that the safer thing to do is to give rabies vaccine. That includes an immune globulin and multi-dose rabies series, which is not cheap. A typical series of rabies vaccines costs anywhere from three to $7,000. However, all mammals or warm-blooded creatures can actually infect other warm-blooded creatures with rabies. If I have rabies and I bite you, I can give you rabies, human to human transfer. Vaccination of wildlife and pets is now very common in North America. But in a major national or international disaster that's ongoing, both of those activities will come to a grinding halt. Whether there's been a nuclear war or not, your pet can actually still get rabies inside your house even if it never goes out. Transmission from bats inside homes is quite common. And yes, bats do infect humans this way. Dr. Norodine said the answer is false in most cases. It is very rare for opossums to carry rabies, but they are mammals, so it is possible. The Opossum Society speculates the animal's low body temperature makes it difficult for the virus to survive. Possums do carry other diseases, including ones that can transmit to other animals and humans. They include toxoplasmosis and Chagas disease. Possums also can carry fleas, ticks, mites, and lice. The top rabies carriers in our state are in this order. This is interesting. Raccoons with 142 positive cases in 2018. Skunks with 56 positive cases in 2018. Foxes with 55 positive cases last year. And bats with 24 positive samples last year. Dr. Norodine says bats account for 7 in 10 rabies deaths. That could be because people try to catch bats in their homes and businesses without calling the professionals. So in conclusion, it is true. Possums don't usually get rabies, but don't let your guard down. They carry other diseases, so never try to touch them. You'll have no doubt encountered people telling you never to get vaccinated and certainly never to vaccinate your pets. These types of anti-vax messages are delusional and show how deeply stupid human beings can be. This slide shows you why you have to vaccinate your pets. Human rabies treatment was available but by the 1940s and 50s, about 100 people were dying of rabies a year in North America until we started vaccinating pets. If you find a stray animal, report it to local authorities and get them to deal with it. If you have to handle them, be very careful. Sure, the stray might be cute and nice, but they may actually have rabies already, but they don't have any symptoms yet. A rabies-infected animal can infect you with its saliva long before it shows any sort of symptoms at all. If you're British, you don't really know what rabies is because Britain has got rid of rabies on the mainland. So growing up, I didn't know anything about rabies, really. A friend of mine who's British uh, lives in Toronto and she was walking along and she saw what she thought was a little mouse injured on the ground and picked it up. And it bit her. And it, in fact, was a rat. And she wasn't going to go and get any sort of treatment at all until I told her that she needed to because she could well have rabies. And you don't want to wait until you have symptoms before you get treatment for rabies because if you wait until you have symptoms, you're probably, almost certainly, going to die. 
Children specifically need to know how to avoid rabies, and so do adults, but children specifically because actually 50% of the world cases of rabies that result in death happen to children, because children are often unsupervised around stray animals. Some jobs require rabies vaccination, and in fact it's mandated to have the vaccine if you do that job. I'd not advise vaccination just for the purpose of tourism, but if you travel into a high rabies area with the purpose of exploring caves or similar, where you might encounter bats or wildlife in very close quarters, like rescuing stray dogs off the streets of Calcutta, you might want to look at it and think seriously about getting vaccinated for rabies before you go. Nothing I've seen online identifies catching rabies as a, an issue with people who are hunting in North America, and yet it is. A moose can have rabies. A bear can have rabies. It's not that common because of pet vaccination and how we're actually vaccinating wildlife from the air and from automatic feed dispensers. But they still can have rabies. If society as we know it finishes, ends within 10 to 20 years, normal incidents of rabies will return where we all are. And we will see many more cases of rabies in humans than we are used to seeing. Mostly rabies is a rare disease now, but it makes sense for us to know about it if we're preparing for a long duration disaster, a long duration SHTF. It's a very low risk disease, but it has a very high mortality. The global percentage chance of catching rabies is 0.0007375%. The risk in North America is actually lower than this. I'm more worried about human caused climate change and overpopulation killing me and damaging me than I am worried about rabies doing that. But everyone should know what rabies is, everyone should know how to avoid catching rabies, and everybody should make it real certain that very young children are aware of this as well. In 1885, Louis Pasteur, a French man, actually invented the first rabies vaccine in the world and saved a boy who was otherwise going to die from furious rabies. Now, I'm using the word rabies vaccine throughout. There is rabies vaccination where you take it before you get exposed, but you might get exposed. And there's also prophylaxis you take after exposure. You hear people to get in the rabies vaccine after being bitten by a stray dog. You don't hear them getting prophylaxis for rabies after being bitten by a stray dog. Pasteur's treatment was very painful and involved multiple, multiple injections. However, since then, there's a lot less injections and it's a lot less painful. Modern prophylaxis after rabies exposure is actually about as painful as getting the flu vaccine. It is, however, extremely costly. As far as I can tell, in the 1800s, the risk of death was about 100 people per year in North America would die from it, obviously with a much smaller population. So without modern healthcare and without vaccination programs and with wildlife coming back, you'd expect to see probably about 500 or 600 cases of human rabies a year in North America. Still significant, but really low probability. Biting is a huge risk of transmission. Licking is the... Licking not so much. But licking is a known transfer mechanism. If the animal has lots and lots of saliva in its fur and you have a cut on your hand or you touch your eye, you can actually transmit rabies. Be very cautious handling animals. All animals. Now the risk of catching rabies from a small animal is actually quite remote. Mostly because when they're bitten and infected, it usually kills them. There's still a risk. All warm-blooded animals, including you, can get rabies. All warm-blooded animals, including you, can transmit rabies to other warm-blooded animals in your saliva. Now people have had rabies and have had no post prophylactic uh, injections to prevent it becoming furious or paralytic rabies and they've survived. Unfortunately you will not survive rabies in a grid down world. The life support treatment to maintain them alive to give them a very very slight chance of survival and it is very slight is huge, complicated, expensive, it takes lots and lots of people to do it and it will not be available for you in grid down no matter how rich you are. So the message is, don't catch it. The 2 to 3% survival chance of precious was absolute nonsense. Percentage chance of survival was much, much less than that. Now, interestingly, precious did have a form of rabies that people are not aware of. She had dumb or paralytic rabies. Both dumb rabies and furious rabies are from the same virus, but they actually infect you in a similar way, but they have different neurological, physical, mental symptoms. Now, if you get nothing else from this video, suck a lot of hand soap and use it and grid down all the time, especially if you're preparing meat, especially if you're handling dead animals. Be very cautious. It's not about germs, it's about rabies. I'm a prepper and I have lots of soap stored away in various places, but this is just in the bathroom. Now, how would you know if you had rabies? The answer is you might well have no idea that you have rabies. You might know that you've been bitten or licked by an infected animal that was acting strangely. But the rabies might inoculate inside you for many, many weeks before you show any symptoms at all. In fact, you can go two years or more without any symptoms at all that would worry you. Now, if you're thinking, oh no, I have rabies, I didn't know it, you probably statistically do not have rabies, so please don't panic. This is the prodromo stage of rabies. 
If you have furious rabies, you will increasingly have these symptoms. Entering the spinal cord and or the brain, the victim will have rapid mental system failure. Precious had paralytic or dumb rabies. They just stop functioning and die. This is 20% of all rabies cases. Our media focuses on the 80% of the cases that have furious rabies because it's extremely dramatic. Just sliding into a coma and dying isn't really that much excitement for people to talk about. Furious rabies is really dramatic. Despite watching this very good video, you've actually managed to get rabies. What are you going to do? What's going to happen to you? And how long do you have? On average, it's one to three months before you will have any major symptoms. You might get symptoms in less than 10 days, but the average is one to three months before any major symptoms occur. For some people, they get no major symptoms for over two years. Then you get into the prodromo stage, which is essentially a flu-like illness. And then you'll slip into the acute neurological stage. At this point, the virus is replicating inside the spinal cord and the brain, and you've got days to weeks to live. In 2023, we do and can dialyze and ventilate and give inotrope blood pressure support to people at the end of life. Rabies victims are very rare and they get the same treatment. However, the vast majority of these cases, even with our great care, die. Precious was very lucky. Now you probably know about hydrophobia. That's fear of water, terrified at the sight of water, freak out, get violent if you see water, smash glasses of water away from them, stuff like that. It's actually because of the fear of pain from swallowing. Swallowing your own saliva is so painful with rabies that you can't even swallow it, hence the frothing at the mouth. Rabies is an awful way to die. Now an animal may or may not have rabies if they display hydrophobia. My little terrier often is hydrophobic. He doesn't have rabies as far as I can tell. Now an animal may not have hydrophobia or any symptoms at all, and they may have the rabies virus inside them getting ready to get into the prodrome and then the neurological stage. They will still infect you. In a disaster in grid down in SHTF, call it what you will, wear latex gloves. Latex gloves mostly form a barrier to moisture and it's the infected saliva that gets into your bloodstream that is going to give you rabies. Don't touch your ears, don't touch your eyes, don't touch your nose, don't touch your mouth, don't touch your face. If you've got any breaks in your skin at all, cover them up with a waterproof bandage before you handle wildlife. If you've been bitten or you think you may have got saliva into an open wound, wash it out aggressively with cold water as fast as you can. Then get soap, hard soap, and scrub and scrub and scrub inside the wound. This is absolutely essential if you think you have rabies. Then flush and flush again, and then if you're not allergic to iodine, pop it on iodine, deeply soak in bandages and into the wound, and if not, chlorhexine or similar. What you're trying to do is kill the virus that might be inside the wound before it gets into your neurological system, before it goes into the brain, before it goes into the spinal cord. Now, despite the nonsense you'll see and read online, you shouldn't actually do this for other types of traumatic wound. The deep soap scrubbing and popping on iodine is only to be used for rabies and any other bloodborne infection that you might be exposed to in grid down, for example, Ebola. In SHCF, keep your pets confined. Don't approach wild animals. Wild animals with rabies might seem unafraid of people. It's not normal for a wild animal to be friendly with people, so stay away from any animal that seems unafraid. This is very important. Keep bats out of your home. Seal any cracks or gaps where bats can enter your home. If you know you have bats in your home, work with a local expert to find ways to keep the bats out. So in SHCF, if you get rabies, you're going to die. But it's going to be an infrequent cause of death, and it's unlikely to catch it, especially if you avoid contact with saliva of wild animals. It's important to make sure you do bat-proof your homes, especially when you are sleeping. Even a mosquito net over the beds might be a good idea, especially because things like yellow fever will also come back and grid down. Given how horrific death from rabies is and how likely it is to die from rabies if you catch it, scrubbing and scrubbing that wound with soap and water, even considering getting a metal scrubbing brush to scrub inside of wounds, might be an idea. Especially if you're going to hunt wild animals and grit down. Mr. Reeves had furious rabies. Thanks for watching and a special thanks to Julie for telling me to do this as my first topic in my new series of health emergencies in Grid Down. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you've got any specific questions, please ask. I am a retired registered nurse. I do have a trauma background and I will look up stuff as ever. If you follow anything I say online, you're an idiot. If you haven't done your own fact checking, you could die. But let's face it, if the world's ended, you might as well use me. Thanks for watching again. Toodles. This has been a 2023 Tiny Terrier Refusing to Get Out of Bed production.